Welcome back to What Matters This Week. This Sunday, I'm Lauren Maloney. Joining me now is the Commissioner of Forest, Parks, and Recreation for Vermont, Michael Snyder. Sir, appreciate you being here. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You have a big job. You have a day job. Yes. But your, I guess, aside to that, your new title is author here with Woods Wise. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Woods Wise, an exploration of forests and forestry. Okay. Why now? Why did you decide now's the time to put something together and I need to inform people about this? This book is a collection of essays that I wrote over many years, uh, in mostly when I was in a previous job as county forester here in Chittenden County before becoming commissioner, uh, f uh, f and even before that. So I had written a column in Northern Woodlands Magazine called Woodswise for I think 17 years, created uh, ad addressing questions about mm -hmm. the woods, uh, mostly from landowners, and and this book is a collection of those. They've been refreshed, revised, re-edited, compiled, uh, and put together. And uh, why now? Uh, it been wanting to do this for some time. I do have a day job. Uh, this is when we got it done. Uh, had some good help, uh, and and uh, just thought this was something I did as county forester. There's if we put them all together, it'd be one repackaged product that we could share with people and get out there for. Really, it's it's about helping people see the forest and connect to it. That's my big thing. Is I think when this is all about people's questions and curiosity, we try to address it in a friendly, approachable way, in mm -hmm. a way that maybe leads to more questions or more curiosity and really more engagement. Um, with the woods and I think that when people are connected to the woods better things happen. So for a beginner maybe someone new to Vermont but interested in exploring the outdoors would it be perfect for them? Yeah I th I'd like to think so they're they're short I think this is a good thing for uh, busy people and people who are active so let's say you're, you're gonna you're, you're just out hiking or canoeing or camping Bring it along. You see things as you go. You're having fun. There's no quiz. There's no homework. <laughs> um, and these are really uh, one and a half, two page essays that are on one topic that kind of try to get at the issue. Okay. And, and I think as, you're, as, a, as a newcomer, I think it's a great companion as a guide to help open the door to see into the woods and beyond for so much more. Now, from what I heard, you don't have to read it from page one to 677, not that you wrote that many pages. That's right. But you can pick apart the different essays, maybe given the topic you need to, to learn about or you're interested in about sure. that day. Right, they're, they're arranged in a, in a kind of a mix. Uh, they somewhat build on each other, but that's right. You can love it if someone sat down and really wanted to read it all at once, but you can jump around, pick by topic, maybe by season, by uh, area of interest to yourself. There's quite a range uh, from forestry to how the woods themselves work, how trees grow, how people interact. Uh, there's, a, there's a range and I think you can jump in, you can jump around um, and uh, it's, there's a nice flexibility there for sure. There's a lot of questions you tackle so to speak in this book. Have you ever wondered how trees come back to life in the spring? Why paper birches are so white? Is there a question that came to the forefront time and time again for you that you were like well we definitely have to tackle this? I think so. You know, there, there was just so many, and that's what was kind of fun about it. My job in working with private landowners and community folks and kids and classes, there's so much curiosity and see it differently than I might as a professional doing it every day. Um, and so there, there's, a kind of, there's a few, like, how, how do the changes, I think, uh, intrigue people? Like, why do leaves change color in the fall? And how do, how do these leaves come back in the spring? It's been a long, cold winter, and suddenly it's incredibly green and beautiful. Yeah. The, how do they do that? <laughs> uh, those are the kinds of questions, I think, based on what people observe in a general way about changes. And I think also a lot of questions, another kind would be, how do I cooperate with my forest? How do I interact with my forest? I want it to be okay. I want the animals to be healthy and the trees to be, the animals to be safe and the trees to be healthy. How do you do that? That's a very common question or just, I saw something, what's up with that? Like, why does this tree look the way it does? Or why are birch trees white? I mean, it's so really- So why are they? <laughs> it's a great, you know, they're so, they're so beautiful and so distinct and different. There are other light colored trees. Their, their trunks are light colored, but there's only one that's white like this. It's gorgeous. And it stands to reason when you think about where they really live. Uh, we have them here, but they, they, their native range is far north and is circum uh, continent, polar. They, they basically transcontinental birch, white birch trees grow all around northern latitudes. And 
Although you'd think in such a cold environment they'd want to absorb heat and be warm. When it's winter and cold in those conditions, white bark reflects all the light. That's why it looks white to our eyes. It's reflecting all the light instead of absorbing anything. They don't want to absorb any light because they don't want to warm up in the middle of the winter because they would risk having a cloud come and now suddenly it's 10 below again and those active cells, those cells that came to life because it got a little warm with a little sunlight that was absorbed, they become active and then they're vulnerable to dying immediately Is that by why the freezing. trunk kind of sheds a little bit? Well, that's often why you'll see splits and cracks yeah. in a tree stem is because it, it got a little warm in the middle of the winter and it started to activate and grow under the bark and it really doesn't want to do that because it's not really warm enough yet. So this was, is seen as some way of a white birch trees have evolved this bark color to give them an advantage in really cold climates where they mostly grow. It, remember, they do grow right here yeah. in the valley, and, um, but they take that beautiful color with them here when they grow here. What is the most common, maybe most amusing question you get from kids? Oh, kids are the best. They, uh, I think uh, it's the fall color, why do the leaves change color, asking kids. Um, and what I like about kids is they're less, they seem less interested in asking the question and way more interested in answering it. And they come up with some great <laughs> questions, uh, great answers on their own. Uh, I remember one kid talking about m little monkeys that paint the leaves uh, and change the colors. And I like that, that, oh. that uh, creativity in their thinking sure. for sure. So the question for you, is there something you discovered or you learned, maybe relearned, in the process of maybe doing some research and writing this book yourself? Tons, all of it. I mean, it's all, it's not like I would see something or be asked a question and have an answer. That was kind of the fun of, would be, I'd, I'd have my ideas. I'd have even my, some, some opinions uh, based on my experience as a forester myself. And, and, but digging into the scientific literature, peer-reviewed papers, um, seminal textbooks, talking to other experts, uh, many of whom work and live n n here in Vermont, so I would love, I would just go and do the research uh, and take, find a lot of facts and figures and information and have a stack like this and then somehow think, oh, I have to whittle this down to something that oh, would be one page in the magazine that somebody might actually want to read uh, with a little free time. So that was the process of taking a lot of information, as much as I could find, and then distilling it and turning it into something that was maybe fun to read uh, and, and keep someone engaged. So it's at some local bookstores. If people are interested, they can also order right. it. That's right. It's available in, in many local bookstores. Uh, if not, just ask for it. It can be ordered. Uh, it's in the Amazon marketplace if that's your thing. Uh, you can order it directly from Boncliffe Books, the publisher, as well. Okay. Commissioner, appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy to do it. We'll be right back on What Matters This Week.